What's up guys, it's the High Tech Redneck again. This is a video um, on basic pocket knife philosophy and also sort of my evolution of thinking in pocket knives as time has gone on. Um, so let's start out with one of the oldest pocket knives that I used to carry. This old, no name brand, stainless china um, lockback. Now this is a standard lockback. It's a very thin knife. It's a very small profile. The handle is very short from top to bottom this way. It's long. It's got a decent length blade. And it dulls quick. It sharpens quick. It's got a nice little profile on the blade. It's a clip point, but it, it feels like a drop point on the, on the actual edge whenever you use it and sharpen it. And I like this knife. I, I actually love this knife. And if it was still a working knife, I would carry it all the time. You can see it's all nasty now because I use it for really nasty, goopy jaws where you're going to probably have to clean a knife and I'm, I'm lazy I don't like to clean knives all the time so I just pick this thing up the springs broken in it so I'll just use it to you know work on some really funky stuff once in a while and uh, I'll probably throw it away one of these days okay next in line was the Kershaw Black Horse 2 so I was in my teens and I wanted to spend a little more money on a knife and uh, I ended up with this guy and as you can see it's not that easy to open with one hand it's not that easy to close with one hand it's kind of a pain to handle and uh but aside from that it's a great knife i love the knife i love the thickness of it i love the way it fills my hand i love the ergonomics of the grip and i use this knife to skin deer and you know work with and do hard work every day and plus every day you know small work and at the end of the day it turned into a pain it was hard to open it was hard to close unless you use both hands and when you're working you know you don't always have both hands it was not a flow through design there is a metal backspacer in here and uh that's a pain man you get some guts in there or something like that when you're skinning the deer and it's not fun to have to dig all that out you're gonna have to take another knife and get down in these little things and dig all this little stuff out and it's not fun. Plus, there's you get rust in there. You have to get in there with Q-tips and you know polish and whatever, and, and scrub it out of there. And it takes a lot of scrubbing. It takes a lot of work. I mean, like you can see, there's rust. It's a stainless knife, but there's some rust here, right there. A little pit of rust that I've had to get rid of. And uh, it's a great knife. I like it. I would recommend it if you want it, but I would not recommend carrying it every day in your pocket. This thing is huge, and if it had a pocket clip and it fit down into the corner of my pocket, like, say, the Benchmade 300 does, it's a big knife, too. It's a big, wide knife. But I love this knife. I love to carry it because it fits in my pocket out of the way. This thing goes down in the bottom of your pocket, and it looks like you're packing a banana around. I mean, it really does. It, it's huge. It's fat. It, it, it sits right on top of your thigh at a place where you don't like it whenever you bend or something like that. And, uh... As a matter of fact, I once pulled a muscle because of this knife. I tried to run, and this knife squeezed against my leg in the wrong way and some pants that were a little too tight. And when I was running, I actually pulled a muscle in my thigh right, right where this knife was sitting because of the way it strained my leg. And so, uh, yeah, it's not exactly the perfect knife to carry. And I learned that the hard way because I love big knives, and I love to beat the crap out of knives. I love sturdy knives, and I thought this was just that until I realized it's too hard to carry. So I almost never carry this knife anymore, though I still use it around my house quite a lot. Um, it's a good knife made out of good steel, but it's just not right for me. So then I broke another knife that's now long gone, and I started carrying this. And I carried this for about 10 years because it filled the role that I needed it to fill so perfectly. I, uh... I beat the crap out of this knife. I tried to break this knife. I tried to destroy this knife, and I could not. It is a very impressive knife. This is a Remington Fast, F-A-S-T. It's an acronym, I think. Um, they're not expensive knives. They're still not expensive knives, though they're a lot more expensive than they were when this one was left in my car by someone years and years ago. And uh, it's, like I said, it's very thin. It's ergonomic. It's somewhat similar to this knife, as a matter of fact. I like either a very thin knife that's very easy to carry or a very thick knife that's very good for hard use. This was a compromise for a long time and uh, I love it. I love it. Buy 10 of them if you can. Uh, these are the kind of knife that you want when you want to break a knife, when you want to really beat on it, when you want to abuse it, use it as a screwdriver, use it as a pry bar, use it as whatever you want to use it as. You know, Do everything the owner's manual tells you not to do and this knife can take it. It really can. Uh, 
So yeah, I carried this for a long time and it changed the way I thought about knives. It changed the way I looked at knives, learning to use the pocket clip, getting used to a frame lock. This frame lock is extremely strong. It's much easier to operate with one hand. I learned that with this knife. I learned how handy and convenient a pocket clip is. And I became addicted to these smaller, lighter knives with a pocket clip, with a flow through design. As you see this one, I can get it all nasty and whatever and rinse it off with a water hose and it's good to go. It takes almost no maintenance and uh, I like that a whole lot. So when you're choosing a pocket knife, keep that in mind. How easy is it for you to use it with one hand? How easy is it for you to access it in a hurry? And, you know, above all the other features that, that you already think about, like, is there a guard on it? How ergonomic is it? We all think of that. But but think about your locking mechanism. A liner lock, I will not use. I still absolutely detest a liner lock because they are weak. They fail all the time. Maybe if it's a $500 knife with a liner lock, that might be a good one. But I'm not going to pay that much money for a knife. And if you're buying a $20 or $40 knife with a liner lock, I will be willing to bet you that... 60, 70, maybe 80% of those knives will fail on you at some point. This one has never failed on me, and I've come to love a frame lock because of that. Now, next in line is the Uncle Henry. This is one somebody gave me uh, at some point long, long time ago. I love this knife. It's small. It's slim. It fits in my pocket well, even though there's no clip, and it's very easy to carry as a backup knife. So if I don't carry my fixed blade, I'll have this clip to my pocket for quick and easy use. And then say I work a day, you know, at a job where I open a hundred packages and this blade gets dull on me. Well, what happens when something happens and I need a really sharp, really precise knife and my main blade is dull? Well, then I've got this guy. And not only do I have a backup blade, I've got two backup blades. This is a very old stockman. You see a lot of sharpening scratches and a lot of junk on it. I did not do that. That, that was like that when the knife was given to me. And on top of that, someone broke the blade off of this knife, one of the blades. And so it's down from a, a regular stockman to a two blade knife. And you can see it's been sharpened really bad. This knife has been abused. It's got big dings all over the back of the spine on both of them, actually, on both of the blades that are left. And uh, I have not abused this knife. I've taken pretty good care of it because I like this style of knife as like a collector type knife. But I still carry it also, and I'll bring this in the woods with me. This this little blade right here is great for cutting, you know, cords or the small stuff, making small little marks in trees or whatever you're going to do with it. This is a great little blade. It's a really handy little blade to have, and this is also a great blade. This steel is, um, what does it say here, 897UH by Charade, which UH stands for Ultra Hard. I looked this up a long time ago, did a little research on it, and it's a good steel. It's a... Uh, it's not a super steel. It's not amazing, but it's better than this for sure. This is a decent knife. Um, then we got this. What about this, man? This thing, look at this. It's, it's the size of the last knuckle on my finger. And uh, what are you going to do with it? It's a little two-blade knife. Now, this is a novelty thing that belongs to my mom. Somebody gave this to her. I scraped the rust off of it and oiled it up. It wouldn't even open before. It's still dull. I haven't sharpened it. But it is a decent little knife for what it is. Um, the fit and finish is terrible. It, it's probably you know a three dollar novelty thing from a gas station, but it's cute and it's cool. And I can honestly say that this knife, or for a lot of people who do not abuse knives extremely, this knife is perfect for your application in some ways. Like maybe it's for a woman who wants to carry it in her purse and use it to open a few packages and maybe clean her fingernails with it. This is a perfect knife for something like that. It's extremely light, it's extremely small, and it can be extremely sharp, even though it's really cheap. And uh, so will this knife work for you? It could. It depends on how you use it. Um, I'm a rough knife user. I'm prone to breaking knives, so my everyday knife now is this Benchmade 300, big, thick, stout, overbuilt, huge thing, um, but you don't need it. I really don't. 90% of the time, I don't need this knife, but it's that, that, that once in a while, whenever I do need a knife, and everybody else around says, I'm not using my knife on that, well, guess what? I'll show you some stuff with a knife that'll impress you and, and, and leave you with your mouth hanging open in those times. And it's those times when I need this knife that I'm very glad I carry this extra little bit of weight, the extra little bit of size. And to me, it's worth it. To you, it might not be. But whenever you buy a knife, definitely look at how it deploys. Look at how it handles, you know, with one hand. Look at how it carries. And look at how it feels in your pocket, how much it gets in your way. And uh, take all those things into consideration because you know, different folks need different knives. And that's the short of it. So I hope this was informative for you guys. Have a good one.